In the year 2007, Steve Jobs had just unveiled the iPhone, Gordon Brown became the UK Prime Minister, and B-Movie was about to change cinema forever. You like jazz? <gasps> However, more importantly than any of that was a little game that Vince Sampella, Jason West, and the rest of the team at Infinity Ward were working hard on. This was, of course, Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. 50,000 people used to live here. Now it's a ghost town. I remember from just the first few seconds of booting up the game, I became instantly aware that this was something different. As a kid, I didn't quite know what was going on, but I didn't need to know why we were storming through a container ship, sniping through a nuclear wasteland, or manning an AC-130 gunship to know it was awesome and unlike anything I'd experienced before. By the time that 2009 rolled around, everyone was playing Call of Duty. Modern Warfare 2 absolutely exploded onto the scene, and I can still remember seeing the trailer for the first time, and half the kids at school being off sick on launch day. The entire experience, for better or worse, had been dialed up to 11. For if COD 4 was mostly a grounded set of realistic missions with a few crazy set pieces scattered into the mix, Modern Warfare 2 was more like being strapped into a drug fueled Michael Bay highlight reel. The game was essentially just a case of more. More maps, more guns, more modes, more perks, more attachments, more killstreaks, and it goes on. Giving players more of what they wanted and making it bigger and louder. Then, in 2010, Modern Warfare 3 came out. Despite this breaking sales records and becoming the highest selling Call of Duty of all time at this point, it received a very lukewarm response from fans. Their main complaint seemingly being a lack of innovation from the previous instalment, as well as a lack of individuality or unique elements. This was actually the last Call of Duty game I purchased until the 2019 reboot brought me back to the franchise almost 10 years later. For the longest time I thought I'd fallen out of love with Call of Duty during this time, due to franchise fatigue, or perhaps I was just growing out of the series. But I found myself returning to play COD 4 or Modern Warfare 2 every now and then, and I really did enjoy parts of the 2019 prequel. So was there something that happened in 2010 to Call of Duty that caused me and many others to lose interest in the franchise? Well, following the massive critical and financial success of COD 4 at the time, West and Zampella began to renegotiate their contracts with Activision. In return for delivering a sequel to their latest game, the pair asked for particularly large bonuses and for complete creative control of the Call of Duty property. Activision agreed to these terms, but only after adding a clause to the contract stating that, in the case that the pair were fired, the rights of the series would return to the publisher. Upon completion of Modern Warfare 2, Activision began looking for ways to terminate West and Zampella, so they could not only avoid having to pay out the bonuses they had been promised, but also regain control of the now massively popular Call of Duty series. At the same time, the pair were somewhat aware of what was going on, and were looking for means to create a new development studio outside of the clutches of Activision. Eventually, in March 2010, the duo were released by Activision citing insubordination and forfeited their negotiated bonuses. However, within four weeks they had already set up a new development studio in partnership with EA, taking several dozen developers and Infinity Ward staff members with them. This studio was called Respawn Entertainment. I want to keep talking about Call of Duty for just a moment, particularly this mission from Call of Duty 4, which is one of the most recognisable and well-reviewed campaign missions in any modern FPS title. It isn't just the shift in tone and pacing from fast-paced soldier action into stealthy sniping section that makes this stand out, 
nor is it the excellent level design and set pieces that are still memorable to this day. No, I think what makes this level stand out amongst a set of other really outstanding campaign missions is this guy, Captain McMillan. This character is only featured in two missions where you play as Captain Price, who was just, just a lieutenant back, back then, with the pair of you attempting to assassinate an enemy of the state, Zakaia. The campaign as a whole is also full of believable, memorable characters, however it's the relationship of Macmillan and Price, or more accurately, Macmillan and the player, that is the focus here. The action and pacing of the campaign is slowed down, and has allowed for a lot of meaningful dialogue and character or relationship building between the two soldiers. It's this dynamic between the player and a partner which works so well and is so effective that they copied it for the sniper mission in World at War also, and then several times, although less effectively, in Modern Warfare 2. In these missions, you don't just have an authority figure barking orders at you, you're actually given the boundaries of gameplay and the objective through believable dialogue, alongside chatter and conversations which help build up the immersion of the game world and characters. For the most part, you're then given autonomy and a choice of how to handle each confrontation or mission stage, whether you want to sneak past enemy patrols or try to take them out without alerting anyone. Basically, try to imagine a Call of Duty campaign, except instead of being part of a squad of soldiers, you're instead in a duo with Captain Price, who has far more impact and involvement in the gameplay, and far more characterisation and interactions. This is essentially how Titanfall 2 operates. Throughout the majority of the game, you'll be partnered up with your Titan BT-7274, who you link with after its acting pilot falls in battle trying to save your life. It's then just one boy and his robot for essentially the rest of the game. This concept would obviously be nothing new or outstanding, but its execution is absolutely spot on. Well, it kind of has to be. This dynamic between the pilot and Titan is what the campaign of Titanfall 2 rests upon, as it's the Titans that differentiate the series between other franchises in the FPS category, and help it feel unique in an already very oversaturated genre. It's therefore really important that the giant killer robots actually feel like they belong in the world, and are significant to the events in the narrative. Thankfully, the developers have made sure that BT is absolutely necessary for the plot, and the story wouldn't work without him. But that doesn't mean any of it feels contrived or forced. There are many other games that attempt to pull off some kind of relationship between a player character and an NPC, for example certain Bethesda games. But in many of these games, the NPC ends up feeling more like a tag-along during gameplay, and doesn't feel anywhere as near as intrinsic for the plot as BT does in Titanfall. The relationship that forms between pilot Jack Cooper and Titan BT-7274 really does feel genuine and compelling throughout the entire game. Initially, BT starts off relatively apathetic towards Jack and even seems fairly cold, referring to him as Rifleman Cooper to begin with, subliminally referencing his lower rank and seemingly not fully accepting him as a pilot, while also giving him orders and information needed to complete the mission. This grows over time as the two work together to accomplish goals and even converse during missions, eventually leading to the point in their relationship where BT begins to refer to the main character as simply Jack, and refers to the objective as our mission. It's insane. I'm incapable of insanity, pilot. Wind. Three knots, heading 274, range 95 meters, projectile mass 89 kilograms. Trust me. You're also given choices of how to respond during dialogue sections. I think I'm going to need some new underpants. Copy that. Noted for the next supply drop. Now this certainly isn't the most advanced dialogue system I've ever seen in a game, but frankly it's all that's needed here. It allows you to feel a certain level of control during conversations, and that amount of autonomy actually helps you relate to your character, and makes you feel like you're somewhat actually speaking to BT, without the dialogue getting too complicated and slowing down sections of the game. Speaking of the dialogue in this game, it's exceptionally good. Not only for an FPS, but as a game full stop. It not only helps to build up the world and characters with meaningful and believable conversations, but it's also just very entertaining and really funny at times. Pilot, exercise caution. You can say that again. Pilot, exercise caution. It also helps that it's exceedingly well voice acted. Shooting games in general have a bit of a trend of having everyone deliver their lines angrily and flatly in an attempt to seem as badass as possible. So everyone can just keep pretending we're all war. But all of the voice acting in Titanfall feels really compelling and unique, and helps differentiate not only the characters within the game, but also the game itself between its peers. There's times throughout the campaign you may feel real genuine emotion or attachment to the characters, and it's really down to how the writing and voice acting makes them feel like a real empathetic person. BT! Got you. Ah! 
But it isn't just the main characters that have a lot of care put into their lines and delivery, it's all of the side characters and grunts as well. Even the Marvin robots in this game are packed full of personality. However, I would be completely remiss if I didn't talk about the villains in this game. The main antagonists are an infamous group of mercenaries called the Apex Predators. The group is made up of six pilots, including Kane, Ash, Richter, Viper, Sloan, and their leader, Cuban Blisk. Each one has a unique personality and design, which is dialed up to the absolute max, yet the continued excellent writing and delivery just makes it all work. They all goad the player, building up to enduring their fights, and have awesome introductory cutscenes that make the conflict feel somewhat personal. This might all be what makes Titanfall unique and separate from its competition, but as a first person shooter, it just wouldn't work if it also wasn't fun to play. In the same year that Titanfall 2 was released, Infinity Ward also released Advanced Warfare, which included the series' first attempt at advanced movement mechanics to a fairly mixed response, and the whole era of jetpack cods still has split opinions to this day. Titanfall also introduced similar movement mechanics, but frankly implemented them in a far better way that actually synchronises the gameplay with the level design, instead of just being a gimmick for the sake of it. It's kept simple too. You can double jump, wall ride, and slide. This small addition to the mechanics adds a huge amount of depth to the gameplay and traversal, without overcomplicating anything. The reason why it works so incredibly well in this instance is because the game and the level design is created with all of these mechanics in mind, unlike in Call of Duty where they created a Call of Duty game and then tried to add these elements to it later, instead of building it from the ground up. It sticks to these simple premises and then just executes them really, really well. It's similar to how the relationship between Pilot and Titan is instrumental to the game and it just wouldn't work without it. Level design is often overlooked in video games, as it's usually the case that you won't notice it unless it's bad. It's a bit like the concrete foundations when building a house. It's rarely noticed and won't exactly impress many people, but if it's done poorly, the whole thing can come crumbling down. I'm not just talking about the way it looks here, I'm talking about how the environment of the level is designed to affect the gameplay. With this in mind, Titanfall 2 feels like a masterclass in level design. Every single mission in the game is set in a different distinct location, which all introduce a different gameplay element for each stage. What's more, each mission seemingly challenges and explores the limits of the mechanics and movement of the game even further. There are some levels in this game that essentially have 3D platforming sections in them, but these actually work incredibly well due to how fluid and intuitive the movement is. And the platforming in Titanfall is actually better than it is in some 3D platforming games, and that's before you even add any first person shooter elements. The stages all have multiple paths and layers, so you can take every fight virtually however you want, and a different way each time. It never or rarely focuses you only to be able to utilise one style of combat. There's one level in particular that stands out even more so amongst a list of all exceptionally well designed levels, and it's this one, Into the Abyss. It starts you off piloting BT as a Scorch class titan, as you begin to explore some form of manufacturing facility, which is cool enough as it is due to the game being designed to give the player lots of tight corridors or areas to trap enemies into, in order to get the full utilisation out of the fire based ability that this class of titan brings. It elevates itself so much further than this though, at the point where you are separated from BT and forced to explore the rest of the facility on your own. Not only is this entire section visually fascinating, with an awesome pulsating score, but it's all also interactive, and you actually have to travel through the various parts and mechanisms of the factory in order to progress. It isn't just a case of being an on-rails section where the platform you're on will take you through the level while you shoot at the baddies. There are definitely enemies to shoot at, but you'll be doing so while avoiding laser traps, crushing hazards and moving machinery, all while manoeuvring through the level. It all comes to a head during the level's climax, which comes once you've made it through the depths of the factory and arrived to this. Resetting terrain. Impressive pilot. You made it all this way alive. Unfortunately for you, there is only one way out. Step up to the pilot. Well done, pilot. I will take it from here. here. Scenario 127 in Dynamic Simulation Dome 314.
Now, we shall see how impressive you truly are. This is just exemplary of how Titanfall takes what would otherwise just be a standard shooter game mission and uses a combination of expert level design and mechanics to elevate the experience to something so unique, memorable and really quite special. And that's all without talking about the guns. If the level design of an FPS game is the concrete foundations, then the guns and the combat are the rest of the house and the garden. Titanfall 2 doesn't falter here either, and in fact I would go as far as to say that the combat mechanics in this game might be the best in any FPS game I've ever played, and definitely from the last 5 years. Each gun or weapon in this game has such a unique sense of personality. They all have different visual styles, recoil patterns, animations, sound design and damage stats that all help them differentiate from one another, and are all viable depending on how you play. Even some of the best FPS games suffer from a lack of weapon variety where multiple guns will essentially do the same job, or weapons from different classes lack enough distinction from one another to where they may as well be the same weapon. This isn't something game breaking, but it doesn't really do the gameplay many favours, and can lead to a feeling of staleness of combat over time. In Titanfall 2, there's a different weapon for every scenario and playstyle, and each one fulfils its role pretty well, making each one memorable and fairly distinctive. There also aren't really many weapons that feel useless or underpowered, and it's more a question of preference, whether you want to run with a shotgun, a sniper or an energy SMG. Even the enemy design is executed to such an unbelievably high standard. I'm not just talking about surface level things, such as the way that they physically look or sound, or how they're animated, which is all excellent, but more how they actively use cover, react to threats or try to outmaneuver and flank you. All of this then combined with the insane movement mechanics and the world class level design creates one hell of a gameplay loop, which is infinitely replayable and almost never gets boring. The gameplay tries its best to make you feel unstoppable and powerful without it ever feeling cheap, and well, what's more unstoppable than a giant killer robot? The Titans basically take the combat and maximise it, completely changing the rhythm and pacing from a fast paced fine tuned shooting platformer into an all out balls to the wall symphony of action. This doesn't mean that it's in any way worse, these sections are just different and good in their own way, feeling more like an ability class based shooter with the different weapons and cooldowns your Titan has. You get to unlock several different Titan loadouts during the campaign which all have very separate abilities and playstyles, meaning that you get plenty of gameplay variety and replayability here as well. All of the boss battles in this game with Apex Predators are also Titan based and each one of them is challenging and interesting in its own way due to the different class of Titan that the enemy uses. I genuinely can't imagine a way that this system or any of these mechanics could be improved. 
Every single part of this game's campaign legitimately comes together and works in a way that is so effective that you'll want to play the whole thing over again just to make sure it was real. It's unfortunate then that I haven't spent nearly as much time in the multiplayer. So, this part is difficult. I understand that a large portion of FPS players are interested in these games for their multiplayer, and well, while Titanfall 2 does actually have a really good online multiplayer mode, the player base just isn't there. EA, for some unknown reason, decided to release this game in October 2016, literally one week after Battlefield 1 and one week before Advanced Warfare, meaning the multiplayer was doomed from the start, as all the attention would be on those existing franchises who were already massive. It pains me to say it, because this game is genuinely one of my favourites of all time, and I've had a great time playing it online too, but if you want to experience Titanfall 2 online with friends, just play Apex Legends. It's made by the same studio, it's set in the same universe, and is the spiritual successor to Titanfall 2, meaning it shares a lot of its qualities, particularly its movement and its gunplay. It's just slightly toned down to match the slower pace of the Battle Royale. We all know these kinds of games are extremely popular at the moment, but Apex Legends is probably the best one, with a ton of people playing it and new content for it coming out all the time, so it really is your best option. Especially since Apex Legends has added its new 3v3 versus mode, which is honestly probably the best game mode available at the moment in any of these games, even if the battle royale genre isn't for you. With all that being said however, it is still possible to find matches on Titanfall 2, and with renewed interest due to the most recent seasons of Apex, it's possible the community may actually start to grow again. Titanfall 2 might be the most original and best shooter I've played in the last decade, but sometimes I feel like I'm the only one that's played it. It will forever frustrate and confuse me that EA decided to launch this game the same month as two of the largest shooting game franchises on the planet, one of them being Battlefield, which they owned. It really seems like West and Zampella have had a consistent history of putting out ridiculously good games that suffer from publisher interference or mismanagement. The reason I've made so many comparisons to Call of Duty is not only because the same guys made it, but because Titanfall 2 feels to me how the recent games in the series should have, and I'm left wondering what could have been if the original Infinity Ward studio had continued to work on them and bring new ideas to the table. I don't really give games a score because I feel like it derives from the actual experience of just playing the game, but every single aspect of this game is flawless to me. The level design, the writing, the voice acting, the mechanics, and oh my god, the music. Stephen Barton has really gone above and beyond with the soundtrack for this game, just elevating it to a whole new level. And that's all without really exploring how the game looks, which is really beautiful. Somehow they've managed to make every level not only engaging from a gameplay perspective, but also visually. Every location explored, despite all being situated on the same planet, is incredibly unique and aesthetically pleasing, and for a 5 year old game it holds up incredibly well. It runs superbly and I'm able to stay consistently over 160fps at max settings on 1440p resolution, even while I'm recording. There's actually one level that's so brilliant and so perfect, I've purposefully not included any footage of it in this video, as I want you all to go and play this game and experience it yourselves without me spoiling it. If I haven't been able to convince you that you should play Titanfall 2, then I'm sorry, I failed you. Because of all the games that I've played, and videos that I plan to make, this is the one that I feel most strongly about, and think you should play the most. Not just because of how unbelievably good the game is, but also just down to how few people have ever played it. It isn't all bad news though, with Apex Legends really taking off out of nowhere, and all the connections it's had to the Titanfall franchise, there's currently now more concurrent Titanfall 2 players than ever, which means there's still a legitimate chance of a sequel. A sequel I'm sure I would also highly recommend you play, and hopefully they won't kill it this time. This loading dock's cargo lift offers a shortcut through the facility. Check your HUD for the control panel. Another shortcut? Trust me. 